How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today is gonna to be a back day. It's gonna be a fucking solid one at that. First thing, I wanna apologize just for the weird ass upload schedule recently. My whole schedule got thrown off last week because uh, one of my buddies from back home flew out to visit me. So, you know, I hit my regular workouts all week, but then he came in on Friday until Monday. So obviously he wanted to go to the gym uh, because the gym I go to is like a really, it's a sick gym basically. Uh, one of the best, honestly, in North America. So he wanted to go check it out. He's never seen it before. So he wanted to go check it out. So I had to like rework my schedule and uh, go all weekend and Monday because he left Monday afternoon. So we went Monday, like Monday late morning. So my schedule was fucked. Basically is what I'm trying to say. So I took a rest day yesterday just cause we hit like a little bit of back. We hit some like chest shoulders. Like we just kind of did a little bit of everything. Um, so I just wanted to give my body like an actual chance to recover cause I didn't really take any rest days. Not that the workouts were that strenuous, but still like, I just want to give myself some time to recover. Um, so I apologize about that. Going to be somewhat back to a normal schedule now. The only thing is my parents are coming in this weekend. So my parents fly in really late Thursday night, like around like 1130 at night. So they're going to come visit. So I'm not sure if I'm going to work out throughout the weekend. Damn, making a mess here. Don't want my dog to lick up uh, the pre-workout powder. Guy's going to be fucking out of his mind. So yeah, like I was saying, my parents are coming out here, so it's gonna screw up my schedule again. I'm gonna work out today, they come in tomorrow. I'm gonna try and work out Friday if I can, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to just like sit and edit video while they're here, cause I'll have to like host and entertain them. Maybe I will have a chance to, you know, it takes me like an hour or two, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But until next week, the uploads are gonna be a little bit off, so forgive me. Gonna try and do my best to stay consistent. But you know, if I don't, that's the reason why. But uh, on top of, or I guess onto bigger and better things, it's gonna be a back day today. I'm gonna hit a very similar back day to last week. I'm gonna start off with the chest assisted T-bar row. I'm gonna go into the high row. I'm gonna go into um, that machine row. And then what did I do last week? Oh, and then that other machine row. Uh, like, a, I'm going to do the neutral grip machine row. I'm going to do the kind of on the diagonal grip machine row. And then I'm also going to be doing a cable pullover at the end. Cause that, oh man, last week's back workout, like it fucked me up. It felt so good. Like it fucked me up in the best way possible. So I'm going to do that exact same workout or pretty much the exact same workout. Um, I always say like, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z workout. And then when I go and do the workout, actually it ends up being different. But, um, in my head right now, I am going to be doing that same workout. So, um, yeah, I'm going to head to the gym. I'm going to get warmed up. I'm going to get ready for working set number one. So I'll see you guys there. Ooh, getting ready for set one here. Going to be, uh, doing the chest assistive T-bar row. Like I mentioned before, um, did a good warm up, feeling good. We'll see how this five plates goes. And uh, some of you guys might be thinking like, I don't know why I'm sitting like this, it feels weird. Some of you guys might be like, I just genuinely want to show you how I work out week after week because you're probably like, oh, you're doing the same workout as last week and the week before and the week before. But that's kind of how it is. Like the workouts don't really have to change that much. You know, like I've been doing this chest assisted T-bar row or, a, you know, a variation of it for fucking years. Like the workouts don't really change a whole lot. So if you're changing your workout every week, you're actually doing it wrong. You want to do the same exercises generally week after week after week and then get stronger at them. And that's how you're basically going to build muscle and grow. So, you know, I'm just here to show you how I train, how I do things so you guys can take what's useful and apply it to your own training sessions, essentially. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to use some straps actually. And uh, I don't know how many, I don't know how many reps I'm going to be able to get, but I'm just going to do as many as I fucking can. Hopefully get like at least 10 and then do a few partials. Oh. Oh. 
Uy. Oh. Yo, I find this one really hard to do partials on. I don't know if it's a fact that it's because there's 180 plus 45, 225, because there's 225 pounds on the fucking bar. But doing partials on this is, feels like it's damn near impossible. That was a pretty good set though. I'm gonna keep this way for one more set and then maybe drop it on the last set for four and just get a really good squeeze. Okay, set number two, same thing, AMRAP. Partials, as many partials as possible at the end. guys i want to talk about something because i see this man the fucking speakers are loud here because i get this all the time in the comments doing that isn't healthy oh you shouldn't do that it's not healthy oh that's not healthy and i get these comments all the time as if this is about health guys not everything we do in the gym is for health do we try and stay as healthy as possible absolutely but there is a lot of unhealthy things about this sport and bodybuilding and building muscle just in general. Like not everything is, is, is basically health is, like every decision isn't made with health being our top priority. Trying to mitigate the health, the adverse health effects is definitely at the top, top of our mind. But at any high level sport or at any extreme sport, you're, you're risking and sacrificing your health all the fucking time. So whether it's bulking and eating so much food, you feel like throwing up, or cutting and getting so shredded, you're, it literally hurts to move. That's not healthy. It's not healthy. You know, the whole anabolic side of it is super unhealthy. Um, taking three, four, 500 milligrams of caffeine before every workout every single day, that's probably not healthy either. So, yeah. you know, health, like we wanna be healthy and we try and stay as healthy as possible. But at the same time, like if you're gonna engage in any sport, you're gonna be risking your health in any job. Uh, so the comment is kind of, like, I think those comments are kind of stupid. Um, if you're just in general, just exercising, that's great. Be healthy, eat in moderation, eat some protein. Don't take, you know, these crazy fucking cracked out pre-workouts every day. Be healthy, but like, you have to understand that that's not everybody's goal is to be as healthy as humanly fucking possible. Our goal is to build muscle and just be fucking walking tanks, essentially. And that's going to come at the expense of our health. Again, trying to negate the adverse health effects as much as possible, but there's always going to be some bad that happens with this lifestyle. And I've accepted it. Every other bodybuilder that I know has accepted it, and it's just a part of the game. So... For all those comments, I keep saying that. It's like, we know this is not healthy. <laughs> We're not doing this to be healthy. We're doing this to get fucking jacked and make gains. So I hope that clears, that clears shit up. Oh. 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 Okay, let's go do this high lat row. I think the guy's still on there, but. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing this one unilaterally again. I'm gonna go with a slightly more underhand grip. Normally I've been going with a straight neutral grip. This one's gonna be a little bit more underhand. I'm gonna be really just focused on my mind muscle connection on this. I need to really feel my back. So 
gonna be locking in one arm at a time, driving the elbow, like scooping the elbow down into my lat, sorry, into my hip, and contracting the hell out of my lat. Not bad. Might go back to the other grip, to be honest. I think that one, I felt it a little bit better. I'm gonna try this one and then reassess. I felt it really good on my left side there, but not so good on my right side. So I'm not really sure what to do now. I think I might just try it one more time. I feel like since this is a little bit more underhand, it's getting a little bit more biceps involved versus the neutral, like the straight neutral. But that left side felt really good. I'm gonna try it again on my, uh, I'm gonna try that same grip on my right side. Maybe I can copy what I did on my left side to feel it just as well as on my right side. If you notice you have muscle imbalances, the way to fix it is to train your muscle groups unilaterally. So if you notice your right bicep is bigger than your left bicep, don't do a barbell curl because what you might not know is your left side is actually doing more work than your right side. So you wanna train them unilaterally. Do dumbbell bicep curls or do single arm preacher curls. But basically the gist of it is to separate them. Don't do them together essentially. The other thing is to maybe do an extra set on the side that's smaller. So do four sets for your right side and three sets for your left side if your right side is smaller. And the last thing, if your left side is stronger than your right side, don't do 12 reps with your left side and then nine reps with your right side. Say you know your right side could only get nine reps, stop your left arm at nine reps, even if you could do more, because your right side has to catch up. And if you're constantly doing more than your right side, constantly doing more with your left side than your right side, it's never gonna get a chance to catch up. Even if you do that extra set, stop it a little bit early until your right side catches up and then you can train it right to failure again. But that's essentially how you're gonna fix muscle imbalances. And a good way to spot them, take pictures of yourself in the mirror. If you look at yourself in the mirror, you'll be able to see. And when you're training, if you notice, you can curl 45s with your left side, but only do 40s with your right side. It's probably because your left muscle, your left bicep muscle is bigger than your right side. So let's do another set here though. I need someone to be patient with me. Okay, that felt way better. Ah! 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 Come on. Ah. Okay. That's that hit fucking hard. And don't be, uh, 
Don't freak out too much about muscle imbalances. They're pretty common. Most people have a stronger left side or right side. So don't think it's unusual or it's, I mean, it's not good. I don't want to say don't think it's not bad. It's definitely not good, but just don't freak out. It's pretty normal. Okay. Trying to get tired there. Oh. Oh. Okay, that was pretty good. Moving on. Let's go do uh, that machine row. Gonna be doing this uh, machine row right here. I love this machine row, but holy fuck. It pulls you in so hard into the, pulls you so hard into the pad. Makes it really hard to breathe. <clears throat> but man, this one hits so hard. I know you guys have seen me do this one a bunch of times, so. Oh, okay, that felt a little better putting my foot like and kind of supporting my chest as opposed to just like being ripped into the pad. So that's what I'm gonna do from now on. I'm not really trying to, so a big difference in my back training now is, and you're gonna see this all the time on the internet, and this is something I used to say a lot too, is to really allow your shoulders to round forward to get a big stretch. The difference in my back training now is I'm sitting back, my back is straight up, chest is kind of like arched, I guess, like I'm pulling it back. And then I'm only allowing my lats to stretch out to here, maybe a little more and then pulling back. So I'm not going like this anymore. I'm going, so I'm just allowing my arms to extend pull a little bit on my lats and then I drive my elbows back. That's probably been the biggest difference in my back training. So we'll see how it goes. I really do feel it a lot in my lats like that. Basically what I was told was when you go too far, the tension actually comes off your lats and you're just stretching your shoulders out. Like it's not really stretching your lats out anymore. So for that first like five inches or maybe two, three inches, you're taking the tension off your lat and then engaging it to finish off the rep, as opposed to now you're keeping it on the whole time. And I have played around with it in the past before, but now I'm solely focusing on that. So we'll see how the, uh, you know, we'll see how the back develops from here on out. Damn, I don't think I should have let the weight drop like that. 
that like pulls me forward like three inches. That was a really good set though. Fuck my lats are on fire. My grip is giving out. I'll do a drop again. Do a few more reps. Fuck this thing. Oh. My back's actually fried right now. Normally this would probably be enough. But again, since I'm only training back once per week, I really like to almost overdo it. So still gonna be doing two more exercises. Gonna be hitting this machine row. It's like basically a neutral grip row. Well, that's exactly what it is actually. Okay, I gotta use straps. My fucking, I mean, my back is on fire too. It's not like I'm finishing these sets and my back isn't on fire, but my fucking grips are giving out. And that's, uh, that's something you guys should all honestly use. If you're not using straps during back day, you're leaving a lot of gains on the table. What the last, even my, the last exercise, my grip started giving out and I'm basically not using them because I'm just too lazy to wrap them up. But uh, for these next two sets, I am going to use them just because my grip is, my forearms are shot right now. Even when you're using wrist straps, you're still gripping the bar. It's not like they're doing everything. They're just taking a little bit off. And if you're going heavier and doing more reps because you have the straps on, they're still going to get fatigued throughout the duration of your workout. So it's not like your forearms just stay fresh all workout. Like they're gonna get tired even, you know, even while you use straps, but I highly recommend using straps on back day. I actually recommend and encourage people to use any type of lifting accessory, wear knee sleeves, wear a belt, wear wrist straps, wear wrist wraps and wear wrist straps. You know, use it all, like it's there. If it's gonna help you lift heavier, go harder and prevent injury, like I'm all for it. Like. Do I think if you've just been in the gym for a year and you're squatting 135 pounds, you need a belt? Definitely not, unless you have back problems, but then you should, probably shouldn't be squatting anyway. But once you get into like the 200, 300 plus pound range, definitely over 300 pounds, use the, uh, use the lifting accessories because they're gonna help a lot and they're gonna help prevent injury. And uh, my goal is to work out as hard as I can, as often as I can, and if I'm gonna be getting injured because I'm too cool to use fucking straps or knee sleeves or a belt, like if I'm too cool to use these lifting accessories and I'm just injuring myself every month, like that's fucking retarded basically. So I'm gonna use these. They help keep my arms feeling fresher. I'm gonna use knee sleeves because they make my knees feel better. And I'm gonna use a belt because it prevents 
my lower back from getting hurt. So, you know, I don't really give a fuck what people say. However, if you're benching 135 pounds and using wrist straps, you're gonna look a little dorky. It's just not really enough weight to really injure yourself, you know? But hey, again, who gives a fuck what people say? Just do whatever you want. Even if I make fun of you, even if people make fun of you, even if people think it's lame, like, I don't know if you have bad wrists or some shit, and neither do they, so do what fucking works for you. That's kind of the most important thing about anything is who gives a shit what people are saying? Do what works for you. This isn't about us or them, it's about yourself improving and getting stronger and building muscle. Okay, I'm done with these fucking rows. Let's do a cable pullover and then get out of here. Okay, gonna be doing this cable pullover. I don't know, as many reps as possible. I'm trying to get a good squeeze. Honestly, my lats are, like I'm gassed right now. I probably don't even need to do this, but just gonna push through it. And uh, this is for anybody who wants to make content, be an influencer, be in the gym. If you're scared about recording yourself in the gym, like that's something a lot of people are not comfortable with is being in front of the camera, especially in front of other people, especially talking to the camera while you're in a public place. You have to learn how to just like zone in and like not give a fuck what anybody around you thinks. I know it seems hard, but like the more you do it, the easier it's gonna get to tap into that. Like if I looked around, there's like 50 people around me all working out. And uh, I still shoot these videos every single day. So the more you're in front of the camera, the easier it's gonna get. So that's my advice, just get in front of the camera, start small, go when the gym is dead. I try to avoid the busy times, um, just so I don't have to be in people's way. And it just makes it a little bit easier. That's basically it, you gotta really not give a fuck what people think. I know it seems hard, but like how bad do you want it? That's what everything always comes down to, how bad do you want it? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh, ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Oh, god damn. That was a good set. That was a good weight. How bad do you want it, boys? So everything comes down to in life. If you just want it worse than everybody else, you're gonna get it. And one thing I've noticed now that I'm in my late 20s, most people don't want it that bad. It's genuinely not that hard to outwork 98% of people. You know, people wanted it when they were younger. As soon as you turn 18, in my opinion, you realize how few people really want something significant. The drive and ambition to achieve more drops so quickly. And then as you get into your early 20s and mid 20s, it only continues to go down. So 
if you legitimately just want it a little bit more and put in like 10% more work, you're gonna end up so much further ahead. Take me for example, I'm a fucking retard. I dropped out of college. I have no formal education. I've probably read like 100 books, 150 books, listened to a bunch on Audible. And now, like I was teaching a class the other day on social media. People are in school for this. Like it's, I don't know, it just was m almost mind boggling to me. Like there needs to be a course for this. Just start an account and watch some YouTube videos and fucking learn as you go. But that's the thing, like, if you just want it, I wanted it worse than a lot of other people and I didn't have a plan B, so I had to make it work and I still don't have a plan B. So I still have to work hard to make it work every single day. But that's what keeps my drive and that's what keeps me going is the fact that I don't have another option. Like if this doesn't work out, I'm fucked. And that's what drives me to keep making content. Um, and that's why I appreciate everybody who supports me because I couldn't do this without you guys, but you know, you could apply these same principles to your life in whatever profession, career, whatever field you're in and go very far with it. Don't settle for fucking average here. Okay, let's go check the pump. It's gonna be filthy, you can already tell. Okay, let's see how this pump looks. That was a fucking crazy workout. I think I'm gonna, next week, I think I'm gonna make that fourth machine that I normally do, the third exercise or the second exercise and hit it a little bit earlier into my workout because I get such a good squeeze on my lats when I do that one. I get a good squeeze on the other ones too, but I've been doing the other ones for a while. That one's relatively new. Like literally it's my second time doing it in my routine. So I'm gonna try and do it a little bit earlier just to, you know, see how it hits basically. Okay, let's check this pump though. Ooh. Not bad, not bad. I always have a fucking tank top on even though I kind of like keeping the oversized tees on now. Okay. I'm gonna lower this a little bit. Bring it a little closer too. There's only a couple good spots for lighting in this posing room, especially for back. Cause when you lean back, it's all dark. So you can't see anything. Let's hit this front. See from here how it looks.
God damn. I'm fucking winded right now. I feel like a fat ass. Okay, I'm gonna hit this one from a different angle. Okay, let's see how that looks. All right, guys, back home from the gym. My lats, ooh, they're feeling good right now. I could still, like, they still feel pumped almost. So that's gonna be my routine for the next little while. Maybe I'll adjust some of the exercises where I'm doing them, but I think that's gonna be it, man. That fucking, those workouts have been hitting lately. So yeah, man. Very, very good, pretty satisfied. Was it as good as my last workout? No, but I mean, last workout, like when you switch up your routine and hit some new exercises, it always hits so hard. So once you do the same workout, do the same workout, do the same workout week after week, I feel like it hits less and less hard each time because you start to get used to it. And then once you switch up the workout, then it hits super hard again. So obviously every workout is not gonna be the best workout ever, but that was, you know, out of 10, I'd say that was a seven. Last week it was a 10, this week it was, no, let's go. Let's go 7.8. It wasn't quite an eight, but it wasn't quite a seven. It was a very good workout though. So pretty happy with it. I could tell it's gonna work, I'm gonna grow. Um, so ultimately that's all that matters. And um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of finish off on my last point of, you know, just simply, what was I saying earlier in the video? Um, it was something about, you know, I think it was something about just starting. And, uh, you know, if you're worried about where to start, how to start, like don't overcomplicate things, guys. I've been in your position too, with it, whether it's been with the gym or this social media stuff, where I had no clue what to do. I had no clue how to start. And the best thing you could do, especially if you wanna separate yourself from the pack, because so many people get stuck at the gate, if you literally just take that first step forward, you're gonna be ahead of 98% of people because so many people are just sitting there overthinking everything where they never even, they basically fail to launch. So just start. If you don't know what to do in the gym, just go and do literally anything and you're already ahead of most people. And then over time, do some research. You know, There's so many good YouTube videos. There's so much good resources out there where it's like follow one or two people. It doesn't have to be everybody um, because, you know, follow one or two good people and you're gonna learn quite a bit. The problem when you listen to everybody is like, especially in fitness is like, do this, no, do this, no, this works, no, this doesn't work, no, this works, no, this doesn't work. So sometimes you get a lot of contradictory ideas. So follow one or two people. I'm sure like it'll, you know, get you some decent gains and then you can sl slowly start to like dial in exactly what works for you or hire a coach who knows what he's doing, hire a good coach. Um, and then you can always invest more and you know, learn more about building muscle. And then if it's for social media, cause a lot of people ask me about that as well, literally just start. Like I mentioned earlier, I was teaching us, like I was a part of a social media course where the students could ask me how to do it. And you know, it's like anything, everybody had these ideas like, oh, I wanna monetize this way, I wanna do this, I wanna do X, Y, Z. And it's like, you literally have to just start and then as you go, course correct. Cause we, I had all these ideas too when I first started, I wanted to come up with like a subscription plan and then clothing and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, do you see any of that today? No, like I literally didn't keep continue on with any of that because it didn't work, you know? So I had to course correct, I had to like, try, fail, learn, try again, fail this way, try again, fail. So like you basically fail your way to success with anything. But if you wanna get ahead of everybody else, just start because everybody, so many people are gonna to fail to launch where if you just start, you're gonna be ahead of so many people. 
And then if you really care about it and you enjoy making it or enjoy making content or enjoy going to the gym, you're going to learn, you're going to invest into it and you're going to be miles ahead of everybody else. Um, but ultimately you have to enjoy the journey because that's what it comes down to. I enjoy making these videos. I really don't give a fuck if they get 10 views or a hundred views or a thousand views. Like I just enjoy making this content. So ultimately I know over time that people will vibe with it because I can already see growth and I've only been doing this for like three, four weeks and I can already see growth. So I know I'm on the right track. It's just a matter of, you know, being relentless with it, being consistent with it and uh, taking action every day. If you just take action and you do the work, uh, you're going to get ahead. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how good you look, how bad you look. If you just take action, you do the work and give it enough time, you're going to get ahead. Um, because again, most people just are lazy and don't want to put in the work. So, you know, if you're just that guy who's willing to put the work in, you're going to get ahead. <laughs> like it's kind of funny actually. Uh, and again, you'll notice that once you get a little bit older, when you're like 20, it's kind of hard to see. But now that I'm 28 and I can see the playing field, I'm like, okay, this guy's lazy. This guy's lazy. This guy's lazy. Most people are fucking lazy. Um, so if you're just, and I'm lazy too at times, but I just always get the bare minimum. I have to get done, done. And I'm always trying to do a little bit more. So I think that's where ultimately I have a bit of an advantage over other people is I can be consistent and I can put in work over a long period of time. So I'm not, I, like, I have no formal education. I'm not the smartest guy, but I, I do enjoy learning. And I've read like, like I mentioned earlier, like a lot of books, I don't know, dozens, hun like, I don't want to say hundreds, but like well over a hundred books at this point, um, just on business, social media, YouTube, um, history, like everything. I read a pretty diverse range of books. Um, so again, guys, how bad do you want it? I wanted it really bad and I continue to want it really bad. So that's why I keep trying to level up my content, keep trying to improve, keep trying to give you guys more value. Um, and yeah, I'm going to take you guys along for the ride. And I hope if you're watching these videos, like I really want you guys to want this for yourself. Don't just watch me fucking do it. Apply it to your own life because I, I want winners. Like I want to be around winners. I want people who watch me to be winners too. Like I don't want you to be fucking making 30 K a year, sitting in your mom's basement, being fat, being lazy, being out of fucking shape. Like I want you guys to be motivated to go do this for yourself. You know what I mean? Like get fired up. Like this is your own life that you can, you're in control of. So don't just watch me do it for myself. Apply this shit to your own life. You know, if you're making 40 grand a year, try and make a hundred. If you're making a hundred grand a year, try and make 200. Like there's always that next level. And I'm just talking, you know, monetarily, but even for fitness, like if you've been at 150 pounds your whole life, try and get to 175. If you've been at 200 pounds and or say you've been at 240 pounds and you're overweight, try and get down to 200 and get shredded. Do like, you know, just challenge yourself and uh, level up. Like that's the community and the vibe I want to foster here. Not just a bunch of fucking people watching me who aren't doing shit for themselves because they're wasting all their time watching my videos. Apply what you see me doing from my life to your own life. And trust me, you're going to start to level up. So, you know, with that being said, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I got to eat. I'm so fucking hungry. <clears throat> I'm going to be eating. I got some, uh, some chicken thighs some chicken thighs right here. Oops. I'm going to be eating it with some rice with a bunch of rice and uh, that's going to be dinner. So I got to get this going out. I got, I got to cook. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Solid back day. Tomorrow is going to be probably legs. I think it's going to be a leg day I sh I, or chest. I don't know. Chest or legs. We'll see. We'll see what I'm feeling tomorrow. So yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe and work hard at your own fucking life. Get in shape, get jacked, get shredded, level yourself up. If this is getting in the way, if you watching me is getting in the way of you doing that for yourself, turn off these fucking videos and get to fucking work.